Hello friends and welcome back to the shop. Today is Saturday, June 23rd. It's a beautiful day today in southeastern Pennsylvania. And if any of you like music, I want to apologize for that opening. <laughs> so today I am uh, smoking this uh, 7LE. I always forget what this is. I think it's a 322. Beautiful shape. Nice pot with a nice bend to it. Um, and it's got Haunted Bookshop in it because that's what I'm smoking. And just lighting up. Went a bit aggressive there because I don't want to have to spend a lot of time. Fiddling. Um, I often have my pipe going when I start the video. I just packed it before I started because I wanted to do that intro for you. And I'll explain why. Uh oh. There we go. I'll explain why um, in a moment. Hmm. I just bought another pound of haunted bookshop and I. Every time I buy it, I put a picture up on Instagram saying something like, will I actually manage to get any in jars? And uh, my friend Pipe Fool, uh, check out Pipe Fool's channel if you, if you uh, don't already know him. Uh, link will be below. Pipe Fool said uh, it's, it's, a, it's a step in the right direction that I'm even thinking about jars. So we'll see if we get any in it, jars. So I chose this pipe because I... Um, well, I like it, but, and you, you've seen this pipe before, but um, I chose it because I believe I purchased this pipe right around the same time that I finished this guy. And this is my first uh, ukulele that I, that I made. Um, now, I've talked before about the fact that I used to do some luthery. Uh, making stringed instruments and several of you have asked to see some instruments and all that and I've been a little reluctant to do it because first off it's not something that I've done in a long time I finished this in 2008 and I don't think I've I can't remember what was the last instrument I made if this was it or if it was something else uh, I've made a few mandolins ukuleles that that's it I actually started a violin but I never really finished it and I got a ukulele somewhere that's like three quarters of the way done um, so who knows maybe I'll find that as I'm working on the shop and I'll finish it up I don't know but uh, this guy came down to the shop today because it's got a loose fret and uh, I figured I might as well bring it down and, and show it off a little bit and, and talk about it some uh, and share it with you now while I and I, I believe a fairly reasonable maker of ukuleles. Uh, I'm a terrible player. I haven't touched this in probably five years. I'm not exaggerating that. I literally have not picked this up and, and strummed it in about five years. And I did fiddle around a little bit this morning just to get warmed up so that I could do that, uh, what I hope you recognized as old Susanna. <laughs> Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, my, my, my sense of fingering is all gone. I don't remember the chords and the strumming patterns are a mystery. So, but the great thing about ukuleles is that you can just kind of, you know, just, just, if you, if you just know a few basic chords. You can have fun with it. And they're easy to play because the, the, the strings are plastic, so they're not, too hard on your fingers. The fretting, well, it depends on who makes it. I make my fretting fairly low so that it's easy to play. Uh, I think I can... Yeah, there's the problem. So, if, if you listen, I can, I can pretty much get a note. Well, almost. But if I go on this string, so I can go all the way down the last fret here, but on this string, I'm losing it. And that's because one of the frets is loose and it's angled up and it's touching that string. So I need to fix that. But this is um, a ukulele that I made and I thought I'd show it off a little bit. So it's, it's a mahogany body. Um, the binding, which is this darker region along here, 
is done in uh, local walnut. The neck is, um, I believe it's a sapelli, um, but you can see there's a there's a fusion in there, and I can't remember what that is. But there's, it's hard to get a piece of mahogany that big. Um, and the fretboard is actually, you know, this whole thing is one piece down to here, but the fretboard has a cover on it, which is walnut. And hopefully you'll be able to see there's actually a mahogany inlay in that walnut, uh, which are my initials. Uh, the fingerboard is made of rosewood, um, and I think that's about it. It's finished in true oil, uh, which is a sort of Danish oil type finish, uh, very popular with uh, gun makers. And it's been sitting for a long time unloved and uncared for. So, these are not hard to make. Um, well, I obviously I've got a full wood, woodworking shop and I've, I've built some specialty tools to, to do it, uh, but they're not really, I mean, this doesn't take a, you know, 20 year apprenticeship to be able to make them like a violin would. So if you're into woodworking and you're at all interested in uh, making a ukulele, I highly recommend giving it a go. There are, there's, there used to be uh, forms online for people making them with, you know, plans and stuff like that. Uh, Stuart McDonald sold kits. I don't know if they still do because I haven't touched any of this in a long time. But anyway, you can always get in touch. Um, oh, I, I forgot about the inlay here. So that inlay... Actually, that is a, um, what's the word I'm looking for, nitrocellulose um, inlay around the, around the sound hole. So there's nothing, nothing terribly fancy about that. Okay, anyway, I wasted enough time with this, but <laughs> I thought you might like to see it. I'm very pleased with the, the grain and on it and everything, and I, I, I think it looks pretty. And it, uh, it plays nicely, just not in my hands. So we'll set that aside so that we can fix that fret and maybe I can make it sound a little bit less horrible so um, got some what I think is great news uh, from my eye doctor I had to go back for follow-up on uh, let's say this was Thursday and I'm I'm doing really well I've got 20-20 uh, vision in the, in the eye they fixed so that's fantastic uh, he tested the other eye And he did this test where they simulate uh, oncoming traffic light. And uh, he said that my vision is bad enough in that eye that I can go ahead and have that one replaced as well. So we've tentatively scheduled a, um, the procedure for late August. And uh, I figure, what the heck? I mean, I've gone this far. I might as well get the whole thing done. And uh, then I don't have to worry about it. So the problem with that is that I... so. I think today, no, tomorrow, is the last day. I'm, I'm fully unrestricted starting tomorrow, so I can do whatever I want. You know, I can get, <laughs> I can work without safety glasses and, and just have the normal worries, not anything special. Uh, but I won't do that. And uh, so that means I'm just going to be getting back to things tomorrow. Then we got the 4th of July week coming up. Uh, this is going to happen in late August. I've got some travel planned in... Uh, early August so I think I'm gonna just keep things shut down until the end of the summer um, in terms of, of pipe work uh, I'm sorry to say that if any of you guys have been waiting but it's more important that I get this done um, boy I don't know why that dog is barking we will check that in a moment she was just out so it's it's something silly that they um, they sometimes, you know, a dog will get a toy and start playing with it, and the other dog will decide that it needs that toy right now. And it's probably something like that, because they were just out. So, anyway, I'm not going to have you <laughs> listen to, to dog barking for too long. Uh, hope you enjoyed seeing the ukulele. I, I sure enjoyed showing it to you. Maybe at some point in the future I'll show you a mandolin, although you're not going to want to hear me play that any more than you would want me to do it an encore on the ukulele. Uh, in fact, I think Isabel's barking might be a bit more melodious. At any rate, folks, 
hope you all have a, a fantastic Sunday and a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.